Hello everyone. Thanks for uh, thanks for joining today. Um, super happy to be here. I'm Hanan Levy, the product line manager for uh, data security, uh, which includes file access manager. Um, and I want to talk to you today about the file access manager activities REST APIs. So um, let's dive into that. So <laughs> with 8.4, we're introducing a new kind of activity API uh, that is it enables our, our customers, our partners, our, our, our you know architects um, as well to kind of extend our uh, file access manager capabilities and include activity monitors in 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 to our generic connectors and, and other existing connectors in which we don't currently support activity monitoring um, natively, right? And so. Obviously, activity monitoring is one of the, one of the core capabilities of, of File Access Manager. It, it, it affects a lot. It also, uh, one of the only things is like truly, truly kind of um, real time and mission critical. Um, and, and by this new activity REST API, we're enabling some of the connectivity layer that doesn't currently support it nat nat natively to be extended. Uh, and while we do that, uh, we obviously want to keep everything secured. So the authentication to this REST API that will be able to ingest activities from third party sources is going to be leveraging um, you know, full OAuth 2.0 authentication. It's going to have the ded dedicated tokens uh, with a specific scope. So you know, you can you can leverage that to a specific application. Um, and also uh, is built for scale. So you can obviously, you know, ingest bulk, large bulks of, of the activity data um, and, uh, you know, with, with, with great performance. Um, it will unlock several, um, you know, advanced governance uh, use cases that are kind of dependent on having activity data. Uh, obviously the, the first one is actually understanding Who's doing what with the data? Who's who's leveraging the access that they have to to perform operations on the data itself? Uh, that will come with the activity that's being ingested. Um, that activity will, of course, go through the same process as any type of activity uh, that natively uh, is being monitored by FAM. So it's going to go through an enrichment process of the identity itself. I mean, it's going to be correlated with the the data source. It's going to be um, you know, enriched with any classification information that are relevant to those resources. Uh, and that allows you to also kind of apply policies and, um, you know, for example, to, to enforce uh, threat detection alerts on, on that ingested data, right? So um, same capabilities that you have with, uh, with the native connectivity. Um, of course, all of the activity data is, is um, analyzed and being captured. Um, and aggregated so you can detect detect where stale data uh, exists, where, where there's data not, that's not being used or where there's uh, X that's not being used, right? Um, of course, in addition to that, it can also help you create uh, threshold alerts and alerts to detect kind of deviation from normal activity, uh, you know, activity uh, standards or, or um, you know, um, trends. Um, and of course, use our uh, data ownership election process that is also heavily based on having activity data and usage statistics. So all of this is kind of added to um, to your core governance capabilities in our generic connectors and, you know, um, the connectors that don't currently support activity monitoring by, you know, uh, adding those um, capabilities through a third party integration through that REST API. And of course, you know, this feeds into all of the different dashboards and all the different presentations that we have in, in, in FAM. And you can see here, of course, you know, the, the, the activity trends, uh, the alerts, but also, of course, you know, highlighting where there's, you know, unused access um, and uh, unused data. The supported endpoint for that, um, you know, REST API, new REST APIs to ingest activities are going to be all of our uh, generic connectors, the NFS and SIF storage um, connectors. Um, so everything from uh, Nutanix to pure storage, um, you know, Cohesity um, and, and, and a lot more. In addition to that, it's going to be available for some of our native connectors that don't currently have activity monitoring coverage, such as Linux, um, AWS S3, Azure files. Um, but 
in case you want to extend it to any other type that's not currently there, um, that's really easily done, right? It's, it's a small, short configuration um, that will have, an, have to happen in the back end, but, um, you know, no code change required and it's something that you can you can easily do. Um, and if you do want to kind of extend it to other endpoints that are not generic or one of these three, uh, you know, reach out to our services team and they'll be happy to, to help you with that. Um, as we talked about, as part of this, there's a new kind of, um, a, you know, authentication token that's going to be uh, going to have to generate, um, but this is exclusively for that REST API, so it's not going to um, going to affect any other any other integrations or any other tokens that you're using today. Uh, and this is kind of what it looks like, right? It's a, it's a it's a very simple API. It's meant to be very simple, um, to be easily consumed by people who are not necessarily uh, you know full on developers, but you know that can um, help and extend our capabilities by by you know such integrations, um, and so the token endpoint obviously very simple. Get your um, get your uh, kind of initial token access token. That token, as you can see to the right, um, is includes a refresh token as well. Um, standard G JWT um, with an access token, a refresh token. That refresh co token can be used to, you know, refresh the token um, through the refresh token endpoint uh, or call. Um, and the activities endpoint, um, which is the only other endpoints in that REST API, right? And that activity, that endpoint basically uh, just ingests the um, API, the, the activity data that you're sending in a JSON format. Uh, the JSON format can contain one or more activities depending on your implementation. Um, there are some mandatory fields into that structures and they're listed here. Um, the application name, this is how we correlate that data with the uh, information that's already stored in File Access Manager. Uh, the timestamp, it has to be in a particular format, uh, the ISO 8601, which is, there's a, an example here. Um, the username, which helps us, of course, correlate that user to an identity and so extend that identity context with our, um, you know, um, identity stores and, and our data enrichment connectors uh, that we have available in FAM. Uh, as I mentioned, it's going to go through this, the exact same process. So if you have an identity, if you have a data enrichment connector, you know, that will go uh, and enrich that information, whether it's an IIQ uh, enrichment connector or something to AD or something to, you know, any any other um, source that you can, uh, you can add. The object name, obviously, um, if you have to have that to populate that activity on something, could be a folder, could be a file, but, you know, that object, you know, sh should exist. Um, the action that's taken place, this is, there's no limit to what this can be, um, but of course, if there's native actions that come in from the endpoints, uh, endpoint itself, uh, it'd be good to reflect from readability. Um, but if there's anything you you know any any processing that that third party uh, implementation that you're creating needs to do to kind of normalize that or adjust the name of the activity, you can certainly do that. There's no validation on that as well, and the resource. Again, the resource would be where we correlate um, the resource to the, the one saved in FAM. So uh, that would be the same, for example, if that's an, it's a folder, if that's a file, the object name could be different from the resource, but um, basically the object name should be kind of a nested under resource, um, depending on the implementation. And um, the response, again, the response would uh, basically just confirm the number of uh, successful activities that have been ingested. Uh, with any kind of activities that are not being, uh, haven't been ingested or, or some, some detection that um, some, some errors were detected, we're gonna reflect that in the error message with the, you know, with the data itself. Uh, which is pretty standard, right? The only two validations that are that we are going to do is on the application name and the resource. Again, the application name is going to be used to correlate that to an application, and the resource name is going to be used to correlate that to a um, 
a resource in file access manager um we went through these um you know usernames obviously ip address these are not mandatory but you can you can add those uh to add to your you know visibility um within file access manager and also if you add that information it would be available for you to kind of define policies on or define alerts on and it's just you know run reports so it would be uh more information um Object new name is one field that usually is used when you go through rename operations for folders, um, same as a as, uh, new resource. Um, so object new names for folders and files, but new resource is usually for a folder. Um, again, an old name and old resource usually got also kind of to modify that rename. Um, so these would be kind of dependent on whether it's, a, it's such an operation. Uh, but most others are pretty pretty general to all all actions. This is basically it.